Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is NFL Draft Day. It is Thursday, which begs the question, why are you yelling? Why are we all yelling? I'm sorry, I'll try not to yell for the remainder of the video. It's Thursday, so this will be the final mock draft on my channel in which we don't know where the rookies are. After this video, we're going to know where all the rookies are, where all the veterans are, except for Cam Newton, even though I already know he's going to be the New England Patriots starting quarterback. Y'all don't know that yet, but you should take my word for it because it's a fact. We got the sources here. We got the sauce. We got the sources. We got everything y'all need. Today's mock draft, we're going to be doing it on drafters.com. So let me plug this into Discord real quick. First come, first serve. First come, first serve. What the fuck is that phrase again? For first, uh, I'm struggling on live television right now. I'm sorry, mama. Draft is open. All right, so I promise we're going to start this off in a second. So basically, I will throw this into Discord. Mock Draft Central. General. And okay, so we're going to do this on drafters. Now, if y'all have been messing with my channel for a minute, you knew that we love to do some best ball drafts on draft last year. There we go. There are the boys. They're joining quick. They got those quick Twitter fingers. Um, we did a lot of drafts on draft last year. They are no longer a thing as of right now, but we have pivoted over to drafters. And this is a really fun website to draft on. This is going to be a 12 team draft. So we got 12 people joining in here. Uh, there are no kickers. There are no defense. For those of y'all that are new to best ball, you just draft the best team that you possibly can. It's an 18-man roster, and the software will automatically start the best players available at each position. Quarterback, running back, wide receivers, tight ends. This is going to be a two-quarterback league. Start two quarterbacks, start two wide receivers, start two running backs, start a tight end, start two flexes. And I think right now is a really, 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 really good opportunity to do a lot of these mock drafts and this is actually technically not a mock draft on drafters these are dollar buy-in leagues so i believe you can start free leagues if you wanted to just mess around with your friends or whatever but this in this one in particular is a dollar i like setting them at a dollar because you know you're getting realistic people drafting even if it is 25 cents or 50 cents or a dollar in this economy every dollar goes a long way so you know people are taking this shit seriously seriously as the corona baby so Here's what we're going to do. We're going to, first of all, wait for some more people to join. Let me tweet this out right quick. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. My Twitter is linked. Sorry, my layout's still kind of shitty right now. I'm still figuring out the software. Software, my Twitter is linked right there, uh, at Nick underscore BDGE. So make sure you're following me on the Twitter. As soon as this draft fills up, I promise that we're going to get into the actual analysis and stuff. I do want to go over uh, some of the, the trades that have been made in my Dynasty League while we're waiting. So uh, if you don't care about Dynasty, if you don't care about that analysis, you will just want to skip to the start of the mock draft. I will link the timestamps down below in which that actually starts. So you can just stop listening to me altogether. I know a lot of y'all get just big mad on the internet all the time. So that's cool. So this is my current Dynasty squad right now in the Go Fade Me League. And uh, I'm feeling good about it. My starting roster is nice. As long as Cam Newton ends up in that Patriots quarterback one slot. Otherwise, we are going to be hurting for a squirting. A lot of these times when I do these videos, I don't really pay attention to what I'm saying. So a lot of ignorant shit just comes out of my mouth. So again, also apologize for that. So Russ and Cam are my are my, my starting two quarterbacks right now. If Cam doesn't sign, which I, I don't see that happening. I, I just think that it's a lot of, um, it's really like if there was one off season where Cam wasn't going to sign, it'd be this one because he can't physically get in front of teams and work out for them and get the physical done and all that kind of shit. So he's in a rough spot. But behind him, I mean, look at my stud. Uh, look at my look at my uh, squad of running backs here. We got Eckler, Chubb, Mixon, and Damian Williams as my flex. I like Damian Williams just for one more year. Obviously, I'm probably going to have to ride him into the sunset unless we get like midway through the year and I'm not a playoff team. I could send him to a playoff team as a contender, um, depending on what the KC Chiefs do in the draft, of course. Julio Jones, Terry McLaurin, Ertz, and then my bench is pretty uh, lackluster to say the least. So I will be using this draft to really supplement the rest of my team. I have, let's see, I don't have a first, but I have three second round picks, a uh, third round pick, and a fourth rounder. So here are some of the trades that we've made so far. Let's check back in on the mock draft right quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Also, if you want to get invited to these drafts, 
uh, you can just add me on Drafters. So if you sign up on Drafters and you add me, my username is just Nick B D G E. So I believe the drop down menu over here. I know my video portion of me on the screen is taking up a little bit uh, of the section, but if you go over here to the drop down next to your name, you could pen, uh, you could add a friend somewhere. I don't know. You could oh find friends. Okay, so do that. Find friends, Nick B D G E. I will accept you, and then I could add you or whatever, and invite friends to the league. Um, when you sign up, you can use my promo code as well, BDGE, and whatever you deposit, you're going to get 50 percent on top of that. So if you throw 10 bucks in, you'll get five dollars on top of that to draft with. So you'll get like 15 drafts to do if they're dollar drafts, which is fun. Um, yeah, we're not going to go into that one. So we're still waiting on. Uh, let's see, one, two. Let me refresh this real quick. So waiting on some people, so we can talk a little bit more dynasty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Waiting on. Four. Four, four, three. Yeah, I'm not really good at math. First thing in the morning. We're filming this pretty early right now. I'm on my third cup of coffee already, though. Mm. Shout out to all my fellow crackheads. By that, I mean coffee. Crack. I don't do crack. I just sell it. Okay, so let's talk some trades. And, and let me know if you guys like this kind of section of the video where I just kind of go off topic and, uh, and talk about random shit with my teams. Because I know a lot of, like, YouTube videos... You know, we try to keep it centered so it's relevant to the to the SEO and relevant to the title and the thumbnail and shit so everyone doesn't get mad when they click on it and it's not exactly what they paid for. I will give you your money back, all right? I'll refund you if you don't like this section of the video. So here's the the first trade I made this off season. I want to say was, well, first off, someone dropped Dante Pettis during the playoffs last year. So at the end of the playoffs, like week 15, someone dropped him. I picked him up. And then someone offered me their 311 this year for Dante Pettis, and I literally could not quick, uh, could not click accept fast enough. Any draft capital for Dante Pettis at this point is beautiful because we know his range of, even if you like Dante Pettis and you still think he's going to be a thing, his best case scenario as of right now is not the weapon one, not the weapon two. So we have Debo Samuel is, uh, of course, by far, in a way, ahead of Dante Pettis on every level. George Kittle is obviously by far and away a better weapon than Dante Pettis at every level. So if everything breaks right, Dante Pettis somehow, you know, gets his chemistry back up with Shanahan and the team, he could be at the very best a weapon number three on a team that runs the ball at an extremely high rate. Uh, they're probably going to draft a wide receiver, if not with the first round, if not with their 13th overall pick that they just got from the Colts. So I, I don't need to sit here and tell you about how Dante Pettis is not really going to be a thing in Dynasty. So I flipped them for that third round pick where you're going to be able to draft. You know, you're going to be able to take another shot on a guy like Dante Pettis. So I'll take any rookie capital pick there that has a three, two, or one in front of it for a Pettis. So that was the first thing I did. Second thing I did, I believe, was my trade for Nick Chubb. So I actually traded for Nick Chubb, and I was super fucking excited because the way I drafted my team, per se, was... Oh, are we about to start? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we're waiting for two more. I'm sorry for the wait, guys. I guess I don't really have the clout that I that little old Nick once was. I'm I'm old and I'm washed up. But it gives us more time as a family to talk and 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 mess around and uh you know, more bonding face to face. I'd give you a kiss through the screen if I could right now. So Nick Chubb. Nicky 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 Chubb. So Nick Chubb, I sent Melvin Gordon. Adam Thielen and Hayden Hurst straight up for Nick Chubb because the way I drafted this team was kind of like compete now I was going for the championship in year one the, the 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 first year of the league was last year 2019 I made it to the championship but I lost so that was fucking heartbreaking Vatch I don't I don't even know if you're alive Vatch you haven't said anything in the group chat in, in like six months so I'm a little scared for the champion he might have went on like an Ovechkin like bender uh, someone's going to have to check in with him. If we have any police in the audience, I would like for you to give uh, a quick check into your database for a guy named Vatch. I don't even know his last name. Never seen a picture of him. So uh, if you're a real good detective, you'll figure it out. Nick Chubb, Melvin Gordon, Adam Thielen, Hayden Hurst. So again, the way I drafted was I went, I went for uh, a lot of veterans, right? So I had Julio, I had Edelman, I had Adam Thielen. So I had a lot of older wide receivers that were producing for me last year and I knew I had to start moving those pieces to get a little bit younger so that's why I got rid of Adam Thielen and Melvin Gordon at the time a lot of people actually liked that the other side of the trade I thought it was a slam dunk for me getting Nick Chubb there like I love the fact that he's young even if you think Kareem Hunt's going to eat into his workload like this year that's fine I mean he's eventually going to take over as the workhorse as a stud in that um in that lineup there's no there's no secondary way around that Nick Chubb's going to be the guy for Dynasty so I was ecstatic to get him 
getting rid of Melvin Gordon, I mean, the dude's already old. Uh, and like, yes, he might be, you know, a back end RB1 or like an RB2 high end this year. And that's fine with me. But to get the upgrade from like a 27 year old down to a 23, 24 year old workhorse stud, I'm cool with that. And Adam Thielen was an older guy who, and this was also, this was also, I, I traded Gordon before he signed with Denver. So I took a little bit of a chance, but I was like, everyone's like, oh, he's going to Tampa Bay. I'm like, dude, like in fantasy football, everybody just projects best case scenario. So try to take advantage of that when you can, right? A lot of people like to wait to settle for someone to land somewhere or to see where all the draft picks end up or to see where the free agent sign. That's also a good time to capitalize on the optimism of fantasy players because fantasy players, man, we just like points. We like scoring. We like excitement. We like players that fucking do things. And we just assume everyone's going to do everything. And that's never the case. It's the reason why Vegas wins. Because everyone gets excited, bets the over on everything, and the under hits all the time. Because it's fucking un-American to bet on the under. But we do it. But we don't. And we don't do it. And we lose money. And uh, and that's it. And the draft is starting. So I moved Melvin Gordon before knowing he was signing with Denver. As soon as he signed with Denver, I was feeling fantastic about it. Because now we got him in a running back by committee situation. I got to get rid of some of my depth or some of my veteranness for um my veteran players sorry i'm kind of looking at a million different screens right now uh my veteran players for for a young guy like nick chubb so that was the first move i made second move i made which was yesterday or a few days ago i actually got rid of Cortland sutton now sutton was a piece on my team where i was like i'm not moving him no matter what but i got an offer for terry mclaurin the 112 and the 303 for Cortland Sutton, I believe it was the uh, three 311 and Muhammad Sanu. So Sanu was just a throw in, obviously, but it's pretty much Sutton for Terry, you know, swapping. Obviously, I'd take Cortland Sutton straight up, but I, I, I am more high on Terry McLaurin than most people in the industry. I think I think for me, the way I look at him is he's a real, real wide receiver one, like alpha in that offense. He's almost like a Robert Woods with four three eight speed. Like I don't I don't know how like people realize just how good Terry McLaurin is on the deep ball, but he also operates as a possession receiver. So I, I want all the Terry McLaurin. I think his upside is way higher than people believe. I think he could be a top five fantasy wide receiver in the NFL for, for multiple years running. So I was okay shipping Terry for Cortland. And because my team needs depth, I need more players that aren't 28 years old. I was happy to bring on the picks, take a, a small downgrade from Sutton to McLaurin, take the 112, take the 303 in which, you know, the 112 is going to be another wide receiver where I can get like a Denzel Mims or like a Jalen Rager or someone like that in, in the super flex league. You're going to see some of those really good guys. So the question really becomes like, you know, and at 303, you could probably get some good players too. You don't know who's going to drop there in the draft. Like you might be able to get a guy like Brian Edwards, who people are a little bit scared of, or you might be able, probably not Brian Edwards, but you, you get what I'm saying here. Like, it's like, do you want Cortland Sutton or do you want Terry McLaurin, Denzel Mims, and like a high upside running back who, you know, probably coin flip to hit or be any good, but um, that's the way I thought of it. And then, oh wait, I don't have the 112 anymore actually, because I flipped the 112 and a few other picks, whatever. I moved back four spots, but I picked up an extra second next year, which was cool. But we'll get into the actual mock draft now. So if you're just joining us back from all the dynasty talk, we have the first two picks off the board as it's been every single draft. No hit, no miss. Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley. It starts to get a little bit interesting at the three, four, five. Because um, you don't know what running backs are going to go off the board. And next video, um, every Thursday, we're going to be putting out individual videos like this. But I'm going to start getting more in depth. We had Zico off the board. So now we have Michael Thomas, Dalvin Cook. Now this is going to be an interesting, interesting, interesting little dynamic here. Uh, do you want the safety or do you want the upside of the running back, Samantha? I'm going to have to mute you. Um, I'm going to go with Dalvin Cook here. And I'm working on my top 12 running back rankings videos. As soon as the draft is done, we are fucking full steam ahead on content. I'm going to be putting out an individual video every Monday, an individual video every Thursday, and then a mock draft every Tuesday. So y'all are going to be with me for a lot. The first video that I'm working on right now is the top 12 running back rankings video. And because I, I like to go in depth on all the players that I break down, it'll probably be broken down into the top six in part one. And then the next video I do will be, you know, seven through 12. And I'm going through the Camaros, the Dalvin Cooks. And uh, man, I love Dalvin Cook. I, I He's my running back three right now behind C-Mac, behind Saquon Barkley. I just think that Dalvin Cook, I don't know if people realize just how good Dalvin Cook was before he, yes, insert all the comments down below about his health, got hurt towards the end of the year. Uh, Cook was Cook. Cook's ceiling is higher than Alvin Kamara's. Cook's ceiling is true. Twenty-two to twenty-five touches a game 
with 60 to 70 reception upside. Um, and Kamara is the same in the passing game. Obviously, you know, he's going to catch 80 passes or so, but we're never going to get that type of upside. Do I, I love both of them this year, right? But it's a slight lean towards Cook for me. Uh, I know I te- typically go with a little bit more risk averse in the first couple rounds of the draft, but Cook's upside is just too intriguing for me. He he went over 25 fantasy points in like 35% of the games that he played. C-Mac was the only one who had a higher percentage of that. So obviously he has the floor because he's getting 18 to 20 touches a game, but not many running backs have the ceiling where he's like a league winner, right? We want to talk about league winners. That, that term gets thrown around so damn often in fantasy football. Like this guy's a league winner. This guy's a league winner. Like Gronk's going to be a league winner this year because he'll finish as a tight end eight. Like motherfucker, nobody that's finishing as the tight end eight is winning you a league. The guys that win you a league are Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, elite, elite running backs. Um, and, uh, who was it? Maybe it was it was on uh, Matt Kelly's Roto Underworld podcast. I believe he brought on. I'm not sure if it was the Rich Rebar episode uh, from from Sharp Football. I believe he bought on. <laughs> was drawn the mock god? I forgot. There's the chat in here. I believe he bought on Rich Rebar, and they were talking about in fantasy the positional value of even a guy like Michael Thomas is really not that good. It's really not that high. And I think it's a subject worth touching on when we're talking about the first couple rounds of drafts. Even if Michael Thomas repeats the season that he had last year, the replacement value for the next fantasy uh, wide receiver is not that far off compared to what we can get from running backs. And we're seeing a lot of people actually think I can do this table. Yeah, now that is beautiful. I can even stretch me out a little bit, make me nice and big and beautiful so you can see the whole draft board. Now that is what I'm talking about. See, this is why we're seeing so many running backs go off the board. McCaffrey, Barkley, Kamara, Zeke, Dalvin Cook, Mixon, Jacobs, Chubb, Henry, Drake, Aaron Jones, all off the board before I can even get to the 19th overall pick. And this is where I'm okay going with wide receiver because there's just an an unbelievable amount of value on the board right now. And what I'm seeing so far with the trends in in this year in particular, which I've talked to you guys about already. God damn, he already took Austin Eckler. I was actually thinking about it. I'd be happy with... uh, one of these wide receivers down here. I've, I've been seeing Julio fall down here in almost every draft. It's kind of a beautiful thing. Um, because when do you get Julio at pick 19 or 20? You know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go with Julio, pair him with Dalvin Cook. I've actually had this start pretty often in in a lot of my uh, in a lot of my best ball drafts. So I go with, let me uh, crop this out real quick. I'm getting a lot of Cook and Jones uh, combinations, and I'm, I'm a, and I'm a fan of um, I'm a big fan of move up there. Sorry, again, this is the first time kind of messing around with this software. Where are you? Okay, well, you can't really see the Nick underscore BDGE, whatever. I'm a big fan of, of really getting a wide receiver one and a running back one on your team when you're drafting because it gives you flexibility at the later parts of the draft. Because if you do end up going like really running back heavy or really wide receiver heavy when you start the draft, once you hit rounds like four or five, probably not early as four, but like five, six, seven, where there are a lot of high upside guys, you kind of put yourself in a bind where um, – where you're forcing yourself to choose, you know, that position, even if there's way better guys available on the board, right? If you go like three running backs off the rip and then someone like, uh, let's see, I don't know, like a good rookie, like JK Dobbins ends up in a really good spot or like Devin Singletary drops to the fifth round, but you don't have a wide receiver one yet or anything. Like you feel, you feel like you need to take a running back. So I like to kind of pair the wide receiver one with a, with a running back one and kind of see where it goes from there. But this is a super flex league, so let's talk about quarterbacks real quick. We had Lamar Jackson go off at four overall. Mahomes all the way down at 10 is fantastic. Kyler Murray at 12. Deshaun Watson at 22. The one other thing I would say to keep in mind, if you are going to come join me on drafters and do super flex leagues, and the, drafters is dope because you get to actually customize the league completely. Like you can do... Um, so you can do super flex. You can do three quarterbacks if you really wanted to. You can do 17 tight ends if you wanted to. Half PPR, full PPR. They give you full customiz- customizability. Did I just make that word up? Customizability in terms of like the actual draft that you want to do. So um, with the quarterbacks, again, you can either set it to super flex or you can set it to two quarterbacks. If you do, if you're drafting in a super flex, keep that in mind because best ball software automatically starts the best guy. 
So, you know, your quarterback two isn't as valuable because you might have a bench wide receiver like a Deshaun, just for example, Deshaun Jackson guy who's like your wide receiver five for the week that actually outperforms your second quarterback. Um, so, so I would say quarterbacks are a tiny bit devalued in super flex best ball. So I know that's like a very kind of picky here, but I just want to get that kind of out there. Um, so after Deshaun Watson late in the second, we haven't seen another quarterback off the board. Ah, nice pick with D Swift. I like that. That's, that's a good start right there for, uh, let's go. Zeke Godwin Swift. All right. So I'm up at the three. I kind of like Travis Kelsey here. Um, I, can probably wait on quarterbacks. I think, you know, just like most years, there's a lot of good QBs late. Like I can get uh, a pairing of like, look how low, like Jared Goff, Kirk Cousins, and like Tua paired down there below. Like I'm cool with that. So I'll probably stay away from there. Don't love any of the running backs still on the board. I think there's still a lot of value at wide receiver. Oh, we do have to talk about the Gronk trade, don't we? I'll take Kelsey here. I love the value of Kelsey right now. It's not a dynasty league. So like fucking give me one more elite year of production from Kelsey and we're ready to roll. So we have an RB one, a tight end one and a wide receiver one. And I like the team setup so far. Okay. So Gronk goes and joins Tom Brady in Tampa Bay. They will take on his $10 million uh, financial situation. Now, I don't know the logistics behind like him being in retirement and how he got there and whatever, whatever, whatever. But I will go on record, and I've said this so many times, like, how the fuck did Bill get a fourth-round pick out of a guy who was on his couch yesterday? He turns Gronk into a fourth-round pick. I, 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 I truly, truly, in my heart of heart, believes that Jason Licht is the worst, worst, worst front office guy in the entire NFL. I think he is a miserable, miserable, miserable person leading your franchise for Tampa Bay Bucks, Jason Licht. Uh, I, I have to, I know that you're going to be like, well, how could he do that? If you brought Tom Brady on, he has made so many fucking terrible moves after terrible move after terrible move. And I just think like, even in hard knocks, when we watched him, he just, he just, I, I hated him, bro. I really did. And this is not a personal thing whatsoever. I just think he was a bad operator and I would bet money that whatever Tom Brady's decision came down to had absolutely nothing to do with Jason Licht. They got lucky that they pulled him in. Whether it was like the weather, whether it was Bruce Arians, whether whatever it was, family deals, family situations, I don't care. It definitely wasn't licked. So I think he's horrible. And the fact that he had to give up a fourth to get Gronk was ridiculous, in my opinion. It maybe some people know more context to the situation than I do. Preferably not a Tampa Bay Bucks fan who's going to be like, no, he's not fucking. Hold that shit, please. Unless, I mean, you could drop the comment to help me with the YouTube algorithm boost. But like, you know what I'm saying? Unbiased, contextual, please. We try to keep that here on the channel. So. Uh, the reason, so so the, the whole point of me going off on that spiel, which you guys have to be used to at this point, is to say uh, I went with Kelsey over Mike Evans there because you have to be a little bit nervous about Gronk going to Tampa Bay in terms of what it means for Mike Evans' fantasy situation. So when Tom Brady initially signs with, um, initially signs with, Move this down a little bit. When Tom Brady initially signs with uh, Tampa, you're thinking, okay, this is this is nice for Godwin. You know, he likes those slot guys. You know, Chris Godwin is just a guy that plays all over the field, so it really shouldn't affect him that much. With Mike Evans, it scared me from the point that, like, Mike Evans is a big play guy. He's a down-the-field guy. Uh, can Dom Tom Brady still sling it down the field? Yeah, I'm sure he'll be fine this year. People want to, like, look at last year and say, like, he's a terrible deep passer, but he also had – name one fucking deep threat that he had on his team last year. Like, all he had was Julian Edelman. That was it, bro. Like, he was not able to throw the ball down the field last year. And that's where Mike Evans thrives. I just don't think he's going to get, like, the 8 to 10 targets a game that he might have seen elsewhere. And, like, a lot of his games will probably be more like 5 for 70, right? And what happens is you're banking. If you're going to go with Mike Evans in, like, the third or second round, you're hoping that he's going to be scoring, like, 8 to 10 touchdowns. Gronk coming in is a huge hit to that red zone offense for Mike Evans from a fantasy perspective, right? I mean, we've seen the monster Gronk years in terms of touchdowns. They use him down there in the red zone like nobody, bro. So Brady and Gronk have that instant chemistry, of course. They've had multiple seasons where Gronk is going up for 10, 11, 12, fucking 92 touchdowns. So down in the red zone, they got two big options. Who do you think Brady's looking to first? It's not Evans. It is Gronk. So that hurts him a little bit from that perspective. Um, all right, so we've got Russell Wilson and Dak Prescott off the board. I like that turn for for Connor there. Like I said, though, it's mm, I don't know if I like that for best ball. I'd like that in a real league because you'll have a lot of trade opportunity. Um, I got to make a pick here, huh? Man, I, I like Adam Thielen all the way down here. Let's see what running backs we got. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to have to make this pick quick. Let me go with Thielen. 
Um, so another reason why I also think about staying away from wide receivers early on in the drafts, like if anyone that I really liked that, looking back on the, on the, on the draft board right now, I mean, I guess I can't really pass it Julio at 19, but maybe I would have thought about Miles Sanders or a Taylor or a Swift, um, because there's so much value down, uh, at wide receiver when you get to rounds, what are we doing drafters? Oh, I just got up in another league, so they put me on the clock. Hey, we could do this live. Uh, so my team is pretty much filled out already. Um, let's see. This is a this is a two quarterback league. Josh Allen, Cam Newton, Carson Wentz is the quarterbacks. Hunt, Bell, Chubb, Mixon as the running backs. Odell, Juju, Anthony Miller, Nicole Hardman, James Washington. I don't have another tight end behind. Oh man, I've auto picked on this one like seven times, huh? Probably need another wide receiver. I feel like is Larry Fitzgerald just going to get benched this year, you think, for Andy Isabella? I'm going to do something bold here and just take Isabella over Fitz because fuck it. Um, where were we? Okay, so so typically if you're going to come on drafters, as long as you're not drafting in a league with the rest of the big dogs, you're going to be able to get incredible value out of rookie running backs, uh, especially after tonight because this is the last night. As soon as one of the rookies goes in the first round, his ADP is going to shoot up to second round, third round, no questions about it. As soon as day two goes by and, you know, J.K. Dobbins goes somewhere early and Cam Akers goes somewhere early, you are not getting these guys in the fifth, sixth round anymore. So it's a great it's a great opportunity to take advantage of rookie running back ADPs right now. But as I said, it's a great, it's a great, 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 great draft strategy in a sense to uh, – to target these these mid round wide receivers, bro, because if you go running back double up early, um, which again I don't regret it because I got Julio there, but if Julio wasn't on the board, I probably would have gone with a Sanders, a Taylor, or DeAndre Swift, because the value at wide receiver in these middle rounds is ridiculous. You could fade wide receiver until the fourth round, and still, again, you see these wide receivers still end up with Thielen, AJ Brown, Keenan Allen, Allen Robinson, and then look at the wide receivers that are still left, like da Devontae Parker, Stephon Diggs, Cooper Cup. You know, with Brandon Cooks out of there, I, oh, man, I love Cooper Cup. And look at all these other wide receivers. So I'm not even going to take one right now. I'm probably going to get another running back, even one that I don't necessarily like, just because if I fade the running back here again, like it's going to be down to this area where you don't want, like, Tariq Cohen, fucking Darrell Henderson, Sony Michelle is your running back too. So I'm almost forced to take one. I'm not going to take Carson. I think Seattle ends up drafting a running back. Uh, I don't hate Le'Veon Bell in the fifth round. I don't. You know, I'm I'm, I'm – Pretty notoriously known as someone I didn't like Bell going to the Jets last year. He'd be off my uh he would have been off my he'd have been off my draft board last year. I didn't I didn't really take him anywhere. Uh, I like him a little bit this year more because with Darnold coming back for hopefully the full 16 games, the offense should be a little bit better. Second year under Adam Gase, which honestly might be more detrimental. It might get even worse because I feel like he has the exponential negative effect when it comes to to that shit. But Le'Veon Bell still like the unquestioned workhorse there. So if he can get volume like he did last year, I'd imagine he has to have a little bit of a higher ceiling than he did last year. I'll get him in the fifth round. I'm not mad about that whatsoever. So um, so Bell there, but I mean, if you just look at the other wide receivers, it's absolutely insane, the guys that you can grab down here. I was talking about Terry McLaurin. Like Terry McLaurin, 1,000 yards with the fucking shit show of quarterbacks that he had last year in Washington. Uh, now with a real coach taking over and Ron Rivera. Actually, I didn't really hate Jay Gruden as an offensive line, but... I mean, the dudes that you're able to get down here are just unbelievable. I have to take a quarterback because I haven't even touched a position yet. I totally forgot about that. But um, we're seeing some good some good value picks still available on the board, which is beautiful. Rodgers, Breeze, Matt Ryan, eh, they're all probably going to get fucking sniped by me right now. We're going to see a little bit of a uh, quarterback run. See, Scott's smart. Look at Scott. Look what he's doing over here all the way on the right side. I tell you what, Scott's got to be the most improved fantasy player I've ever spent spent my time around. When he first started in the Dynasty Leagues with us, <laughs> some of the shit he was doing was out of control. But he has quickly turned into probably the best trader that I've ever seen. It might, it might not hurt that we have also some of the worst traders I've ever seen in the same leagues. Um, so he goes with three quarterbacks in the first four picks, goes with two running backs, Josh Jacobs, Melvin Gordon, and then, oh, David Johnson. Okay. So listen, I can't, I, I can't, I, I know I'm going to be wrong on a lot of shit. I just come out here and try to give you all the best analysis that I possibly can. I, and if I'm going to make the argument for Le'Veon Bell, then I think you can make the discount argument for David Johnson as well. He's just not a guy 
He's just not a guy I want any part of. But, I mean, in the sixth round, I guess, you know, fucking shoot your shot, Scott. So, Scott is smart. He faded the complete. Like, I, like I was talking about fading wide receiver. He's six rounds in, hasn't touched a wide receiver. I bet you, though, by the time he gets back around to him, like, there's still going to be, you know, like a Debo, a Michael Gallup, some um, Hollywood Brown, even Christian Kirk, Anthony Miller. Like, these are guys that I'm fine if you get, like, four or five of them to stack as your wide receivers. You're going to be all right in best ball, especially when you only need to start two of them. So uh, I like the I like the strategy that Scott's got going so far. The rest of y'all are fucking absolute trash. I'm just kidding. My team is probably fucking terrible as we look at it. No, I don't actually hate my team at all. Dalvin Cook and Le'Veon Bell is my two running backs. Let me put this down. I don't know how you guys. Let me know in the comment section like what you guys would rather see when I'm doing these videos. Would you rather see like the full board like this? I, I bet you guys would. And then less of like the players that I'm looking at, or would you rather see the players available and then less of what the board looks like? Calvin Ridley there. Uh, see, I'm, I'm really glad I went with a running back and didn't miss out on like that, you know, the second tier of running back twos. It's actually really hard for me to see who's available on the fucking board now. Sorry, guys. You're getting schmucked right now. Uh, because now there's great wide receivers available. But I'm going to go with the quarterback here, and I'm going to go with uh, Matt Ryan. Slow and steady wins the race. Let me get that that stack. Oh, yeah, that was another thing that we – Dove into a little deeper last year. We don't have any data on drafters. So uh, because they're cut, the customiz customizability actually might work against us in this case, just from a pure research standpoint, because I remember with draft, they actually were nice enough to kind of export a lot of the data that they had on their website and give it to us so we could break things down. And we found that if you stacked your quarterback with a wide receiver on the team, quarterback with a tight end on the team, your win percentage actually boosted up by like three or five percent. But because the leagues are so customizable here, they didn't have any super flex or two quarterbacks or like full PPR or anything like that. Uh, the data is definitely going to be a little bit different in that sense. But I like the stack on best ball leagues uh, because, you know, Matt Ryan with Julio Jones, because there's going to be weeks, of course, that Julio goes, you know, seven for 180 and probably zero touchdowns. But if he maybe converts two of those into touchdowns, then you're looking at legit like, you know, huge, huge weeks for your best ball team. So I like doing the stacks there. Plus, I mean, like Matt Ryan's got a fantastic floor, so I'm not really about to sit here and have to explain to you who the fuck Matt Ryan is after he's been in the league for 22 years. Raheem Mostert, interesting pick there. See, this is why, like, you need to get those running backs early, bro, because you're a lot of the running backs that you're looking at here in these er later rounds, like the Gurley injury risk, Damian Williams, is someone else getting drafted? Um, you know, David Johnson, you know, I hate his ass. Chris Carson coming back from the injury. Darius Geis, always injured. Carryon Johnson, always injured. All these guys are question marks in my book when you have legit, you know, stud wide receivers and Tyler Lockett. If Robert Woods falls to me, I'm going to actually, uh, this this video is about to turn into a porno, a self-starring POV porno. Okay, well, luckily for y'all, Robert Woods just got sniped from me. But if Terry McLaurin falls to me, the pants are coming off. I'm untucking the shirt. The pants are coming wide off. Um, also, it is Thursday. It is draft day. So I hope you guys join a fucking mother fudger. Uh, we will be doing a live stream. Oh, it's my pick word. So Tyler Lockett still, I feel like the disrespect for Tyler Lockett has gone a little bit far. Like, are we really expecting DK Metcalf to pop off for 1200 and Lockett to just take an absolute backseat when he already has three years, four years, 22 years of chemistry with Russell Wilson? I don't think so, motherfuckers. So listen up. This is a PSA on Tyler Lockett. Show some goddamn respect for T. Lizzie. Okay? Myself, myself, Noah, and Mike. Bunk bed breakdowns, fucking bonanza squad. The bomb squad. We will be live streaming throughout the entirety of the NFL draft. Rounds one through seven. It's going to be like 22 hours of live streaming. I will. I don't want to know the weird shit. That's, I wish I can kind of like fast forward to the end of it and see all the ridiculous things that we did on the stream. But it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you want, you know, fantasy analysis during the draft, where these rookies go, how they fit into the depth chart, what we think their outlook for both dynasty, rookie drafts, redraft going uh, further into it. We're going to be breaking down all the offensive picks. We're going to have tons of guests coming on during the live stream right now. I kind of tweeted it out the other day and had some people DM me interested. We'll have Dr. Jesse Morse, uh, you know, a friend of the show, come on and talk about some of the guys that are coming into the league injured, break down their injuries. We got Graham Barfield, uh, who just started his new platform, Fantasy Points, with some of the the, the brighter minds in the industry. Uh, Graham Barfield does one of the absolute 
best jobs of breaking down rookie running backs coming in with his articles on uh, yards created. So I would go suggest that, um, you know, they just started up their new their new platform, yards create, uh, uh, fantasypoints.com. They'll let you sign up for free right now. They're doing their entire platform for free until further notice. So a lot of good information available, including Graham's yards created um, data. So go over there, tweet at Graham, tell him I sent y'all. And um, yeah, we'll have, we'll have Doc Morse, we'll have Graham, we'll have uh, Ray GQ, who was on my channel a couple a uh, couple of weeks ago, we'll have a lot of a lot of really good guests, and we'll have some asshole guests like the Animal and Snacks will come on for the Broncos pick, the Giants pick, or whatever. So it's going to be a lot of streaming. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of analysis. Uh, I couldn't think of a better you know a better way to watch the NFL draft. Like turn off the fucking TV, turn off the webcams that they got going on on the actual stream. I don't even know how they're going to stream. It's going to be absolute. It's going to be an absolute shit show. Y'all might have seen the video, or we're about to drop a, sh uh, a video of. Uh, what could go wrong with the NFL draft on the YouTube channel? You guys might have already seen that posted on Twitter or Instagram, but should be an absolute shit show in terms of like tech and everything. But it's going to be uh, the stream will be fun. So make sure that you have your 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 shirts tucked in. Make sure your volume level of your voices is at a low because we will not tolerate yelling unless it's coming from my mouth. Wow. Scott going with the double tight end. Love that. I don't even mind that, bro, because Evan Ingram is going to probably be able to outproduce most of these wide receivers down here on a weekly basis. Though I love a guy like Tyler Boyd here. Uh, I probably need a little bit more. Do I need another quarterback yet? No, there's still some good quarterbacks on the board, so I'm going to wait on that. I tell you what, I, I'm 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 really liking the Kareem Hunt down here in best ball, down in like the eighth, ninth rounds. Like you want to talk about a guy who has not only standalone value but elite upside. Uh, if the guy in front of him gets injured. He's like uh, he's like a Tony Pollard, but you get him. You, you know, you have to use maybe uh, three or four rounds pick earlier, but you're also getting a much higher floor. Like pa Pollard might get like four carries a game in some of his games, but Hunt's. You know, we saw the involvement that Hunt had last year. We have Stefanski coming in, which I think. You know, I talk about I love Nick Chubb. I like both of these guys a lot. This is not mutually exclusive, where it's like you got to pick one or the other. Um, I will probably have my fair share of Kareem Hunt if he continues to go at the 90th pick overall. Like, guys, he won a fucking rushing title already. Like, he's a good running back. Uh, and they plan to use him in the passing game. We have Stefanski coming over. And uh, I talked about this in the offseason already. Stefanski's Vikings last year, they racked up the single most yards on running back screens of all 32 NFL teams. So was that Stefanski? Was that the, the Vikings, other personnel? I don't know. But either way, all of them just wanted to use running backs all the time on every damn play. Hunt's going to be completely involved. Chubb's going to be very involved as well, too. So I like both of them. And if I'm getting Hunt down here, again, he's going to get his 10 touches a game. If something happens to Chubb, you know, Hunt becomes like a, an RB1, no question about it. So I love him in best ball where he's going to have his weeks where he pops off. So um, Hunt as my running back three. I feel really good about that. We got a pretty good wide receiver group. Let's look at the roster I've got so far and break it down for y'all. You can see it in the bottom right of the screen. Let me just pull this up real quick. So at quarterback, we have Matt Ryan. This is a two-quarterback league, so I'll have to get a secondary. At wide receiver, we have Julio Jones, Adam Thielen, and Tyler Lockett. At running back, we have Dalvin Cook, Le'Veon Bell, and Kareem Hunt. Tight end, we have Travis Kelsey. I think my I think my roster is very 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 well put together in terms of weekly upside and weekly floor Explos explosiveness. With um, I I really don't see a hole in any of the players that I picked. There's not a lot of red flags I would say. So I'm I'm liking how the team is turning out so far. Let me know in the comment section how y'all are feeling about this shiz. Okay, so we are starting to see a few tight ends go off the board. We're starting to see a lot of rookies kind of make their move. Jalen Rager, Jerry Judy. I'm a little bit nervous to draft rookies, and I've talked about this already. I think, or maybe I haven't talked about this already, but the the, the fact that this offseason, you know, rookie rookie wide receivers tend to start getting very late, late jumps into the NFL in their first year in terms of like playtime. I'm going to pull up a tweet that I put out uh, after my pick here that might show a little bit more what I'm talking about in terms of like actual playtime for rookie wide receivers. So the fact that they're not going to be together with their team, eh, give me a second, actually, I'll just wait until I have to repick for me to talk about this. I me mean, to talk that talk. I me mean, to talk that talk. I'll probably go with a quarterback here. Oh, wow. Quarterback sec. Eh. See, the tricky thing about drafters is how they have their, some of their quarterbacks listed here. They don't do it by 
1080p and i'm not sure if you now you can't really filter it that way that's something we gotta we gotta get going there so i'll go with my second quarterback here i'd love it to go cam but that's a little bit risky when you still have guys like cousins Goff, darnold whatever on the board i'd like to go to it too but we're gonna go oh i like Minshew. i like the rushing upside i'm gonna go with uh jared Goff here i think i mean like listen the guy just puts up numbers right like look at the last five games fantasy points like why 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 do you want not just want that shit on your team so we'll go Jared Goff, super flex in the ninth round. Love that. Um, let's go to my twat. Oh, Jesus, what's happening? Uh, what did I tweet out? I tweeted out. Is Matt Kelly's name Podfather? No, it's Fantasy Mansion. Fantasy underscore mansion from Nick underscore BDGE. Let's get this braid. Okay, so they were talking about how drafting rookies this year is going to be extremely difficult on their podcast, right? Nate Liss and, and Matt Kelly on the Roto Underworld. And I made this chart. I was looking at, like, rookie wide receivers and their playing time, right? Because you always, you have these stubborn-ass stubborn head coaches, like, out in Tennessee. There is no fucking reason A.J. Brown, I don't care if he's a rookie and he needs to learn the playbook better. He shouldn't be sitting behind fucking Tajay Sharp. Shouldn't be sitting behind Adam Humphreys. I don't care if he's fucking 13. 13-year-old 13 A.J. Brown is probably better than Tajay Sharp. So get him the fuck off the sidelines and get him onto the field. But these coaches do it time and time and time and time again. So we look at the rookie wide receivers from last year, right? These are the guys that ended up finishing within the top 50 as fantasy wide receivers. And you could see that third column is weeks one through eight, their snap rate, right? The first half of the season. The second, the fourth column, right? The one next to the red one, for the most part, is the second half of the season. You see the snap rate of all of those wide receivers goes up big time, except for except for Terry, who was a fucking alpha at the start. And then Hollywood's kind of get hard to get a realistic gauge on because he was in and out of the lineup, you know, with the, with the whole foot and ankle stuff. Um, so kind of wipe him off. But either way, the rest of them, you see the playtime go up the second half of the year. That just, that, that happens year in. And that's not just a case study from this year. That happens year in and year out where we see rookie wide receivers not play as much over the first half of the year. Then the coaches are like, wow, these guys are really good. There's probably a reason we drafted them in the first, second fucking round because they're talented. Let's get them on the field more. That always happens. So my problem, with this year is that if that's the case which will probably still be the same thing they now are at a disadvantage because they're not getting a lot of face-to-face -face time with the coaches learning new schemes getting face-to-face -face time in that connection with quarterbacks right they're not going to be able to sit there and uh, get timing and run routes with the quarterbacks because we're just physically not going to be able to be together as much if the season is shortened right imagine they shorten the game from 16 to 12 i don't know if this is going to happen but i'm just saying hypothetically it's a possibility if it's shortened now guess what that first half of the season where they're not playing uh as many snaps as they should be is now 75 percent of your fantasy season so you're only getting the last four games in which they're playing normal snap rates so it becomes even scarier there's just a lot working against rookie wide receivers because coaches just tend to leave them off the field for an elongated period of time which isn't necessary and it's dumb and so is fucking drafting in the 10th round of a draft right now while I'm talking to y'all. All right, so my, my starting roster is pretty much filled out. I haven't taken a tight end yet. Oh, I kind of like this stack right here. Uh, I took Jared Goff and Tyler Higby still on the board. So we saw Higby ball the fuck out at the end of the year last year. And I, th I think a lot of these Rams, the pa the, the, the targets in the passing game for the Rams is going to be pretty much a funnel, I think, to... Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, Tyler Higby. I'm taking advantage. I mean, you could talk about Josh Reynolds, but like, eh, he's just such a meh for me. He's, maybe I'll throw a late round dart on him, but I'm not, I'm not like really banking on him to do too much productive shit this year. Uh, Tyler Higby in the 10th round, I think is fucking phenomenal. I actually, I actually really love that I got that Goff Higby stack. Um, I love Robert Woods as everyone should every single year because he's just so consistent. Now with Co uh, Brandon Cooks out of the picture, I know Cooks didn't really produce last year, but. When you have that solidified floor, because he's gone, it's 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 a mental thing too. It's just like you go in there knowing. Now it's not like uh, who's going to be the one, two, or three. It's like you have your solidified one and two. And we just we saw how involved they wanted to get Higby down the stretch last year, and he absolutely balled out. So I think I, is is it a is it a fluke? I don't think so, man. I think uh, at least his involvement and in what they want to do in terms of game plan didn't seem very fluky to me. But it is a little bit weird because we did see Cooper Cup's playtime like dramatically fall off. There had there has to be more to that story. There has to be more to that story because his playtime, the fall off from his playtime happened. It was like immediately after he went for 220 fucking yards. So it wasn't like okay, 
Cooper Cup goes for 220 yards. What's the next thing that we want to do? The next thing we want to do is just cut his fucking play time. He's actually not really as good as we expected. That 220 yards should have been 200 fucking 24 yards. He's off the team. So I feel like, and I'm just projecting here. I have no idea if this is the case or not. I think there was way more to the story about the whole Cooper Cup playtime down the stretch because you don't just take a guy like that who's got such good chemistry with your quarterback who puts up elite production numbers and then just cut his playtime. I know they went to more two tight end sets, but Cooper Cup should be fucking out there over Josh Reynolds or Brandon Cooks. It makes no sense. It made no sense to me. So I feel like, you know, I talk about all offseason. The reason I faded Cooper Cup was because the ACL tear happened really late in the season. I wouldn't be surprised if there was something to do with you know, the stamina of him down the stretch, right? He wasn't himself or like something to do with that injury. Not that he like re-injured it again, but I feel like there was something more to the story there that had to do with that. So we'll leave it at that. Um, Okay, I'm on the clock and I haven't looked at any of the players, so this is not a good situation for me. Uh, I'm straight up just going to go Miller. I've been grabbing Miller in like the 11th or 13th round of every best ball draft, Anthony Miller. Yeah, he was really good down the stretch last year. I don't think people like remember. Do I have FF today up? I do. Cool. Miller had a portion of the year where he was balling when they stopped playing, when they stopped playing uh, Taylor Gabriel as much, and Miller came on. You know, like down the stretch, eleven targets, six for fifty-four, six for seventy-seven, nine for one forty, three for forty-two, and a touchdown. Nine for one eighteen and a touchdown. And then of course he ended up kind of shitty. I, I feel like he might have got hurt over here. I don't remember for sure though. Uh, but you know, Taylor Gabriel is not on the team any longer and Taylor Gabriel's not on the team any longer. Where the fuck did you go? Oh, and, uh, and now we have Nick Foles there and I, and I'm almost positive. He will be the starting quarterback for the bears come week one. He's he's favorite. I believe he's minus minus one fifty to be the starting quarterback that gives this passing game more stability. So I like this for Allen Robinson. I like this for Anthony Miller. Miller was a guy I was super, super high on as a prospect. Um, I, w- I was so excited for him to come into the league. But, like, I mean, you get thrown into it, Mitch Trubisky and shit just gets uh, – the game plan for a prospect like that just gets kind of thrown out the window because you don't have any consistency within within your passing game. It's shitty, man. They're a team that wanted to rely on defense and ground and pound. And um, when they did throw the ball, it was inaccurate. It was inconsistent. It was, it was, it was fucking ugly. So, Miller, I- I'm willing to – I don't even want to say right off the first two years because he had plenty of flashes where he was really good. And I think if he's operating as the clear wide receiver too, he's going to put up some good numbers. So I, I really like Miller as a as a later round like value pick in best ball leagues. Let me know how y'all feeling about Miller. Am I crazy for this? Is it like is this? Am I too close to the situation? Is shit getting like too personal? Where I loved him too much that I won't let him go? Let go, Anthony. Isn't it so weird when you think about a player like we think about these players? And you just say their name so many times, like Anthony Miller, Anthony Miller. And then when you say their first name, when you like, like I just said, Anthony there, it'd be so weird to go up to him and be like, hey, Anthony. I'd be like, who's Anthony? You mean Anthony Miller? That was a weird fucking thought that just popped into my head. But when you start thinking about players that you really like, and then you just only call them by their first name, shit starts to get real fucking weird real quick. Might even happen to open a fucking investigation with the NFL about this. Dude. Oh, oh, Justin, shout out to uh, Justin Sheffield. Wow, he ordered a freak athlete shirt. Might have been the second person ever to order that. Animal, look at you. Look at you putting up fucking sales on the Big Dog merch. Um, so, yeah, we also sell some some merch if you guys want to look real ugly. It's over on BigDogsFantasy.com. Actually, some of the merch is fucking dope. I should start wearing it in my... In my uh, Videos a little more, huh? I look at my phone and I get Driscoll. Wait, did someone auto draft Jeff Driscoll? That happened to me before. I was, oh yeah, he did. Hell yeah, that happened to me. I freaked out on air. Sorry about that, by the way. Uh, do I need another running back? Probably. Do I like any of them down here? Yes, I like Justin Jackson, bro. I love Justin Jackson. Also, been getting him of all the twelfth and fourteenth rounds. I could probably wait on him longer. I don't think anyone's taking him, dude. We all know everyone loves Austin. Let, let's let's all right. Let's break down the facts, the facts and the farce. I'm gonna make a new segment soon. This is called facts, facts versus farce. Facts versus farce. Austin Eckler is awesome. Great running back. Facts. 
Austin Eckler just re-signed to a nice fat contract. Facts. Austin Eckler going to be the RB1 in the Chargers' beautiful new uniforms. Facts. Austin Eckler not going to get a workhorse role. Facts. 15, 16, 17 touches a game. Not a fact, but also not a farce. Just a projection. Someone else is going to get the Austin Eckler type workload that Eckler got before he was the man. That is a valuable spot in his backfield. And yes, the Chargers might draft someone. I might sound like an idiot if they come away from the first two days of the draft. If they take someone like the third round, I'll be a little bit more hesitant on Justin Jackson. But they like this kid. And Justin Jackson is a good running back. Is he big? Is he built to be, you know, like the Melvin Gordon type? No, he's actually like smaller than than Austin Eckler is in terms of just like pure build, height and weight. But Justin Jackson, if they don't if they don't put, you know, third, maybe fourth, I think he'll beat out a fourth rounder. If they don't put third round capital into a running back, I think Justin Jackson is going to see 10 touches a game. And I don't think you could say that about any other running back that you're picking within this range. James White, Jamal Williams, Tariq Cohen, Sonny Michelle, Duke Johnson, Devonta Freeman, Tevin Coleman, Boston Scott, Tony Pollard, Chase Edmonds, Matt Breda, Alex, Alexander Madison. I would take Justin Jackson o- over all of them just from a floor perspective in terms of production and, and getting the touches here. I also think Darius Slayton's getting a little bit disrespected, huh? Snacks, you believe me? Do you uh, you side with me here? Snacky poo? Snacky, snacky poo. Yeah, let's, let's show our boy Darius Slayton a little bit of love. He balled out his fucking rookie year. He's a baller. He's a kicking ball. Uh, out of those running backs, who else do I actually like? There are a couple other ones in here. Um, I, I, you know, I, I've talked about Tony Pollard. I think this is about the right spot to take him. I don't think he's any more than like a real handcuff right now. I like Chase Edmonds a lot too. I almost think, uh, you know, they did ride Kenyon Drake into, into the ground last year. You know, over the the last part of the season, but it would not surprise me. And don't be surprised. You're going to hear it here. It wouldn't surprise me if Kenyon Drake was used more in a Austin Eckler or more in an Austin Eckler. We use fucking good vocabulary and grammar over here at Big Dog, okay? If they used him in an Austin Eckler type role where he's still the RB1, still extremely productive, but on like a 16 to 18 touch workload, you know, four or five of them via the air, and they use a secondary back. And I think that Secondary back, Chase Edmonds, will take, you know, like an Austin Eckler type role from last year or what I project Justin Jackson's role to be this year. This, Those are the two situations where I think there is um, possibility for more action than people are projecting outside of just being the backup running back. I think Chase Edmonds and Justin Jackson both have really good sneaky value as guys that are actually going to have a week to week floor. I think they actually have a role in their offenses outside of breather back or backup in case the first guy gets hurt or something like that. So that is my thought on that. That is, Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Oh, yeah. So we got merch up on the site. It's just bigdogsfantasy.com. And uh, I'm actually kind of proud of this, yo. Let me see. Uh, I might pull it up for you all right now. You guys probably hate me. I got to stop trying to sell shit on there. Bigdogsfantasy.com. Oh, no, that was the draft guide. Oh, so was that. God damn it. Uh, Well, I'll pitch this while we're here. We got the draft guide up. It's fucking beautiful. We put so much work into it. It literally takes any of the hard work out of preparing for your drafts. Um, You can get it regularly on bigdogsdraftguide.com. Right now, it's still on pretty much pre-order pricing, um, and it will only continue to go up the longer you wait into the summer to cop it. But if you go over to bigdogsdraftguide.com forward slash MKF, you will get the deal of a lifetime. You're getting both draft guides for 10. Look at my ugly ass face and my dumb hair. You will get both draft guides for $10. A $10 deposit on Monkey Knife Fight using promo code BDGE will get you access to both draft guides. Um, again, if, I've gotten a lot of emails about this. If you're in a state that does not offer it, if you're not allowed to sign up for uh, Monkey Knife Fight, like if you can't play DraftKings or FanDuel, you won't be able to. The draft guide is still available on BigDogDraftGuide.com for y'all. Okay, so we had Ross, Miko Hardman, loving the the Miko Hardman pick at like fourteen in round fourteen here. Preston Williams, Ebron, Justice Hill, Royce Freeman, Sammy Watkins. What do I need here? Got two tight ends. I might take another quarterback if there's one that I see that I kind of like. Kind of hate everybody here. 
but I'll take Nick Foles because he'll probably be the starter there for more games than not. So I'll throw Nick Foles in there, and uh, that'll be my third quarterback because this is a two-quarterback starter, so you're going to need at least three on the roster. Um, oh, yeah, so you can get that there. Bing, bang, boom, bigdogsdraftguide.com forward slash MKF. Big Dog Fantasy, we got some merch on this bitch. On this bitch. Also, we put all our videos up in like blog form, by the way, too. So if you ever want, if, if, if you like to read as opposed to watch me, that came off weird. Sorry. Let's go to shop up here on the top right. And then we got some pretty, 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 pretty merch up on the site. Um, we don't push this too often just because, I don't know. I just don't want to sell to you guys too often. But also the profit margins on these are fucking terrible. I'm pretty sure I lose money every time you guys buy a piece of apparel. But if you just want to support the brand or something, um, this is the this is one of the ways you could do it. If you want to rep, you know, to your to your drafts or to your draft party. If you want to fucking put your baby in a bib, because I know all they do is fucking throw up. They're like snacks on a Friday night. We got a nice little plethora, plethora, pleth, plethora. I feel like plethora is the first word that people who like are not good with like big vocabulary words use to pretend to buy, try to be smart. I've been using the word plethora since I was in like. T fucking junior year of high school. It's like not cool to use. I pretend it makes me smart, but it's it's fake news. All right, bigdogfantasy.com. How you learn? Now we're seeing a few rookie backs go off the board. Zach Moss, Darrington Evans. Uh, Evans is a guy that I really like to target down here. Good, good pick there, top dog. Wow, look at that infamous stack right there. The Derek Carr, Hunter Renfro, elite best ball league winning stacks if I've ever seen one. Um... Again, though, yeah, I tend to stay away from rookie wide receivers in best ball right now. I, I'll, I'd rather wait for them to get a landing spot because, for the most part, they're just not going to produce in their rookie year, uh, not to the point where they're affecting your best ball teams. Running back, so I will say I haven't taken any rookie running backs here, but um, I think it's a very good strategy in early best ball drafts. I really do. I think that um, as soon as the draft comes and goes, that's when – like I remember if you go back to some of my best ball drafts that I did on my channel, they're still up there earlier on probably at like this time last year before the draft I was getting you know tons of Miles Sanders in the 14th round the 12th round the 13th round same thing with like David Montgomery and I know David Montgomery didn't necessarily pan out but if you're getting him there you're still getting that really good value so rookie running backs tend to tend to get a huge discount if you're not drafting with people that are in the big dogs community because obviously we keep y'all updated on the rookie running backs and shit that we like that you should be targeting but if you're drafting with other people you'll get a big advantage at rookie running backs because like cam makers he goes to tampa bay like he's going to be like a third round pick or some shit probably even higher than that but right now you're getting him for like the sixth or seventh round price so rookie running backs i think i think like anywhere any of them are, are good investments even if they end up being a bad dart throw uh, who do we got on the board here? I should probably take another running back. Oh, I'm going to end up being a terrible pick because I wasn't paying attention. Fuck me. Uh, let's go with Naeem Hines. I don't know why. Did they, who they take? I mean, I guess. Fucking Blake Jarwin, you cunt. I didn't really want Blake Jarwin, but I guess like I should get one share of him because apparently this is the year he's going to break out. I guess with Jason Witten kind of out of the picture, like at least the argument for him being in a um, no more of a timeshare could work out. But like Blake, I don't really know much about Blake Jarwin. I'm not going to be on. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to sit here and just start spitting out fucking nonsense. Let's look at Blakey. Blakey, Blakey, Blakey. 474. Uh, the athletics aren't bad. He didn't produce in college at all. He went undrafted. Got good size. 26 years old. First impression, trash. Second impression, though, still trash. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'll just uh, I'll have to do more research on Blake Jarwin, obviously. But like, so can someone sell me in the comment section on why people are excited about Blake Jarwin? Like, I I I understand that he's gone. Like, Jason Witten's gone, but that's not that's not like a. Uh, a for Blake Jarwin argument. That's just like a why you shouldn't argue against him. So give me like an actual positive spin on what we should be liking about Blake Jarwin. And please don't like throw out a one game sample size where he made one catch. Like he's a fucking NFL player. If he didn't have a good catch once in his career, like, what, why the fuck would he be in the NFL? You know what I'm saying? Okay. 
Uh, oh, yeah. I feel like we stopped talking about Rob Gronkowski. I, I say we like as if like half of this is your fault that you stopped talking about him. Uh, I stopped talking about Rob Gronkowski. I think I think it hurts Mike Evans minimally. I think uh, I don't think it necessarily hurts Godwin that much. I think they're kind of much different player, like much different parts of the field and, and where they'll get make their money. So I think it hurts Mike Evans the most. I think yeah, a slight downtick for Chris Godwin, but not not too much. Um, definitely helps Tom Brady, of course. OJ Howard becomes interesting. Like, I don't know. The, the whole OJ Howard argument is, is getting really fucking tired. Um, people just be like, oh my God, his yards per target is the greatest of fucking all time. It's like, yeah, like, okay, because he catches the ball like 11 times a year. It's fine. OJ Howard, like, I, you know, most of the shit that you can argue for OJ Howard, the only reason people like him is they just use like very objective things. Like, he's very athletic, blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah, we know that. But until they start throwing in the ball, you know, commanding targets is, is, a, is a talent in itself. And OJ Howard, one, can't stay on the field. And that, I don't want to say that's a talent, but that's a, a factor, right? When I say, when I say talent, I almost mean a, a, like the, the way to produce a good fantasy player. Let's see what we got here. I can grab my boy Naeem Hines now. The way the 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 cocktail, as we should put it, because I'll be drinking about fifty two margaritas this week, and I hope you guys join us for the live stream, man. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna get really drunk, I think, probably for half of it at least. Maybe I'll try to stay like sober for the first round or two, so I can give you guys good analysis. And fucking once round three hits, all hell's breaking loose. I posted this on Instagram, but I would love to know that what your guys' thoughts on the over under are for higher number before the end of round three is number of fucking margaritas that I've deleted. Or the number of wide receivers drafted in the NFL draft. Drop that comment down below. For those of y'all that are right, maybe I'll give give away a big dog's hoodie. I can't why you guys keep pulling me off Rob Gronkowski? Why do you guys keep doing this to me? It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Nick's Nick's life matters too. Okay? All lives matter. Uh OJ Howard. Yeah, I saw like you know the preliminary talks to like Oh, Rob Gronkowski is getting traded to the to the Buccaneers. And it's like, I can't believe they're going to do an O.J. Howard swap. Like, no one fucking said O.J. Howard was involved in the trade. What are you guys talking about? O.J. Howard needs to get moved in order to, in order to have value, obviously, now. The cocktail, that's what I was talking about. Okay, this is where you guys led me off. The cocktail for a good fantasy player is a mixture of all these things. And I refer to them as talents, right? Commanding targets is one of them, right? The volume in which your opportunities come by is a cocktail in it. Durability is a part of that cocktail. Durability is a talent, we could say. So OJ Howard has a lot of missing ingredients to the cocktail. And what happens is, depending on how your team is put together, depending on what kind of night you're trying to have, it could still work out and be successful. OJ Howard could still be successful, right? If you're going out, if, if you're going out to a nice fancy bar and you want a really well-made drink, OJ Howard ain't gonna be your drink of choice. But if you're going out with the fucking boys, you want to get wasted, you don't care that the margarita tastes like it was just fucking developed out of someone's ass cheeks, then guess what? It's still gonna work, right? Your team can work with OJ Howard being inconsistent, OJ Howard coming off the bench with his durability issues and shit. But there are a lot of missing pieces. So you just talking about yards per target or how athletic he was at the combine or whatever doesn't make him a great fantasy player. There's a lot more that goes into being a productive fantasy player than just you liking a player. I'm always yelling at everybody. I got to stop. I got to fucking go to like anger management, I think. Uh, do I need another tight end? No, I probably don't need another quarterback. I'm going to go with Lavishka Chenault. Lavishka Chenault. I don't know if you guys saw this video already. I'm, I'm going to pull it up for you. Uh, this, is a great, this is a great video that we produced here at the motherfucking headquarters. Wait, I had Twitter up, I thought. Did I not? Oh, yeah, I did here. I think it's pinned on Noah's profile. There are three things I love about LaVisca Chenault. I hope you guys can First, hear his name. Second, his get-the-fuck-off-me attitude. And third, his film. You know how snacks? The three things I love about LaVisca Chenault. First, his name. Second, his get the fuck off me attitude. And third, his film. You know how Snacks says, if my aunt. That's a great New Jersey accent, Snacks. Had balls, she'd be my uncle. If my aunt had balls, she'd be my uncle. Well, I'm saying if Cordero Patterson had hands, he'd be LaVisca Chanel. 
When you get the ball in Visca's hands, good things are bound to happen. He's built like Ulysses World and runs like Eddie Lacy when he hears Mr. Softy roll on by. Dangerous combo for any defense to try to handle. He has the frame and skill of a running back when he's in the open field, routinely making smaller DBs miss when trying to square him up. If I had a nickel for every time Chanel got taken down on first contact, I'd be shaking a can begging for somebody to please wrap this man up like a Trojan commercial. Even then, we know those things are only effective like 98% of the time, and Visca is more 2% than your local gallon of milk. There are three things I love about LaVisca That is uh, LaVisca First, Chenault his name. In, a, in a nutshell, in a condom. If you wrap them up, that's what he comes out with. So LaVisca Chenault is a guy that is, uh, he is like a running back. He's like six foot, 225 pounds. And he, he was credited with the single most uh, broken tackles forced after the reception among all NCAA wide receivers last year. So he, in terms of getting the ball in his hands and making guys miss, he, CD Lamb was the guy right behind him. But LaVisca, in terms of, uh, how many times he did it was way above C.D. Lamb. So he is he is dangerous with the ball in his hands. And that is a guy, when you have a guy like that, you can put him on the field and let him produce right away. You just have to drop screen passes and shit for him where, you know, a lot of rookie wide receivers don't produce because you need to develop technical skills. You need to lo- develop route running. You need to develop that chemistry. But with a guy like Chanel, like we saw with Debo last year, how dangerous he is with the ball in his hands, you don't necessarily need to be a very polished receiver. You just need to land in the right situation. I think Chanel has a very realistic chance of landing within a first round pick or if not early second round pick. Um, so we'll have the draft capital, have the athleticism. Yes, the injuries are a bit of a concern with him, but apparently he's getting completely cleared for contact and everything uh, as of this Saturday. So he should be at 100% full health. Hopefully he can stay healthy. So Chanel in the 17th round, I really like because he's going to check off a lot of the boxes that you look for for a late round uh, kind of like upside wide receiver hit. Okay, so this is going to be my last pick. I like that Michael Pittman pick by uh, Niha right there. Antonio Brown, love, <laughs> love the upside pick there, Scott. <laughs> respect uh oh, i like i like that ever in every draft someone picks eddie Lacey. that was huge i was gonna have to fire all you guys so i'm gonna take my last player and i might take marshawn lynch out of respect or i might take chris herndon out of disrespect i respect peyton barber too what do we have six wide receivers five running backs two tight end maybe i'll take a third nah i ain't gonna take a third tight end fuck that fuck them i'm gonna take whoever the computer picks for me because i'm not about to make a pick huh shit shit there's no everyone's fucking stinks on here. Who'd they take? Mike Boone. I you know I fucking love Mike Boone to be honest, yo. Kid's a baller. All right, uh, that's gonna wrap up today's. My I listen. Th- I felt good. At, I felt good about this video. Was this video good? I felt like I just made a good piece of content. I, maybe it was fucking terrible, but I remember coming off of the last draft video and I was like, uh, I was like, this was so bad. By the like the tenth round, I forgot what I was talking about. I just went on so many tangents that shit got out of control. But I felt like this was a good solid valuable piece of content for y'all maybe you enjoyed it probably not but if you did i would really really appreciate a thumbs up i i I give thumbs up to any single video i watch on youtube bro because i know as a content creator uh you know we put a lot of time and research into these things so i always respect even if i didn't even like the video if i thought it was shitty like i understand the amount of time and research that goes into these things so this is just a general thing for y'all audience members out there if you do watch a video ever you know it doesn't have to be mine but any channel or any creator just in you know out there like it, it helps us a lot when you hit the thumbs up button so just think about that just think about the amount of work and stuff that we put in to make these videos so when you uh when you're done watching a video, I would always suggest just hitting the thumbs up because it lets the creator know that you appreciate, you know, the time and, and stuff that they put into making it happen and uh therefore they will continue to make it. So a thumbs up would be great. Subscribe to the channel if you are new because we'll be doing shit like this every single day of the rest of our lives. And this is the final roster if y'all want to take a look at it. I like how it turned out. Matt Ryan, Jared Goff, Nick Foles as my three quarterbacks. Dalvin Cook, Justin Jackson, Kareem Hunt, Le'Veon Bell, Naeem Hines as the running backs. Julio, Thielen, Lockett, Miller, Slayton, LaVisca Chenault as the wide receivers. Higby, Kelsey. Oh, I forgot I took Kelsey early on. I thought Higby was my tight end one for some reason. Uh, But I like that pairing, though. Kelsey and Higby, Mike Boone, Blake Jarwin down there. So, yeah, I actually really like how the squad turned out. I could probably use a little bit more padding at the wide receiver spots. But overall, I mean, Julio, Thielen, Lockett, Miller, Chenault should get it done week over week, I think. Um, So I like how the team turned out. Let me know what you guys think. Rank one of 12, naturally. I have no idea how they fucking rank those things. Usually that means a a bad thing, to be honest. Let's see what they got for projected stats if they have them up here already. No, they don't. Epic. Um, Yeah, so that's it. If you guys want to 
join me in some of these drafts. Uh, you can sign up on Drafters again, drafters.com. They got a mobile app. They got an Android app, whatever, whatever, whatever. I'll link all that stuff down below. You can add me, Nick BDGE. That the one on the top right there is my Twitter, but on drafters it's just straight up Nick BDGE with no underscore. If you use the promo code when you sign up BDGE, you will get fifty percent on top of whatever you deposit. So if you deposit ten, you're getting fifteen. If you deposit ten million, you're getting fifteen million. That would be fucking incredible. So go use that. Come draft with me. If you want to get into the Discord channel here, uh, our Discord channel is fucking popping at all times. If you want to. Um, talk about some of the trades that you made in Dynasty. If you want to join a Big Dogs Dynasty League, then this is the way to do so. Unfortunately, Discord popped off too big to the point where we have over a thousand members. So we closed it off to the free public and now it is only available via Patreon. So you'll have to sign up on Patreon. Sorry, boys. Patreon.com slash BDGE. That's how you'll get in. If you are already a Patreon member and you haven't gone into the Discord channel, just make sure you email me. I'll get your ass in there. And I appreciate all the support. I uh, hope to see you guys at the live draft stream later today. That will be on the YouTube channel. So just go search around, browse around. I'm sure you'll be able to find it. I love y'all. Thank you for sticking around for me, uh, with me for this long. And I will see y'all on next week's or tomorrow's. We're doing like 13 live streams this fucking weekend. I'm done with this. Goodbye.